Hola. You. Well, all right. Who's leading this call? Because this ain't my section, but I can give a shot. <laughs> yeah, I think we should wait uh, a couple minutes, I guess. Uh, normally, it should be uh, Dave. And um, I think, uh, what is it? Normally, Crop would also join, I guess. So let's give it a yeah, let's give it a second. Hey, Glenn, were you able to record for ADDO? Uh, we needed to record. Uh, no, I wasn't. We weren't able to get my session live today. Oh. Did you have any troubles? Uh, no, no, it went OK, actually. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> we even used the uh, awesome Zoom feature. Oh, uh, I wish I'd been able to do it live. I was on there for a whole half hour trying to get the C vent to like make it live. <laughs> ah, that sucks. Yeah, that's okay. So I'll record it and then it'll be up tomorrow, I think. Nice. No, so apparently nowadays you also have this nice uh, effects that you can apply. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We did that too. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that when I record. <laughs> <laughs> well, your exacto yeah. knife in the pirate outfit is a uh, perfect match. There. <laughs> it's great. It's like, like a mini sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold up. I got you there, Luke. What? That's uh, so great. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Uh, I also have the, the Zelda Master Sword uh, laying behind me, but okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. I just want to point out, like, as de developers, we have the most random crap on our desk. Mm -hmm. I have like a <laughs> bunch of GitHub toys. I have these like commemorative coasters from Intel when they hit a billion dollars in revenue day or daily revenue. I got like a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> I am um, right now I'm showing off my little Argos because I was on a call with the Argo team and we're trying to get them graduated. And I was like, all right, fine. But if I'm going to do this for free, what do I get out of it? <laughs> and they're going <laughs> to like, if they graduate from CNCF, they said they wanted to make Argo hats. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that, please give me that. I will wear that to every conference. <laughs> that would be pretty so, cool. Fingers crossed. Let's get them graduated. <laughs> uh yeah i i think we should kick it off i don't know where dave is yes. uh it is the leadership summit so they might be preoccupied in tahoe at, at this moment okay i know at least c rob definitely will be um so 
but um yeah i would say let's just share and go over their list maybe yeah well i'm wondering so i was hoping I think probably what's the most effective use of our time, because I don't think the list has changed on GitHub. I haven't seen any changes this week. Um, but I think if we ask for an async update on the stream on on the Slack, I think that'll be a good place to make sure that we keep things moving, because it's really their directives that I need to coordinate with my, my side. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we actually also moved a bit uh, here and there a goal to section one and also to your section three. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you already noticed, but um, so um, I think one of the things that we actually also want to discuss here that was the um, the issue that was open uh, that I created, um, you know, because we had also an overlap, and I wanted actually to check with the guys what now the ideas because in section one we have the uh, spoken languages conversion basically um that wants that section one wants to do but we think yeah it's going to be uh from a technical point of view quite hard to actually maintain and update that um and we were wondering if it's not better to actually use like an automated translation api so we actually can convert, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, well, I can tell you for the most part, uh, like a translation is not going to work for technical documentation, but I think the best way to do this, and this is like, we just need to get, I call them the librarians on, on section one, because they don't think like developers, but for this, absolutely not. We should not have an individual maintaining a language. Does not make sense. Um, but, or or a, like a spoken language, right? Um, mm -hmm. So for the natural languages, do it the way CNCF does it. Create a shared glossary and validate with a Slack where you've got five or six people from that language that understand the technical content who state that this is a proper translation. Um, that's a way to have the scalable and maintainable and accurate um, because a lot of times the reason why we absolutely cannot have one person doing these translations is I've seen this come up a lot. The last year I've been working a lot on like Spanish translations for supply chain, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like there are no direct translations for it. So you do have to make a proxy sort of metaphor, um, and you can lose the technical meaning in that. Um, mm -hmm. so we need to have, that's, we should open source it. We should make it clear that we're following the model of CNCF. And I think that that's a free way to get the best outcome. And I don't see a better model than that. Um, but if there's alternatives here. Um... No, I'd agree with you, Sal. I think the only thing I'd say is as a, a proactive step in this, um, like simplifying, minimizing the language, like the originating language, like a style guide that makes, you know, pulls out the jargon, steps like that is sometimes just as important, right? right? So just uh, like building a good style guide that says this is voice, these are the words we use. And then when you edit, trying to pull out all the sort of localized language yeah yeah um i think that makes sense very similarly like when you sign up for the localization in cncf they give you basically like here's our standards um so yeah i think that makes sense um is that a good way to close out that issue as a recommendation uh, well i guess yes if we agree that is the way to go then uh, I, I think we are good I mean, you know, I've been playing with these automated APIs and, you know, you have, of course, the free version uh, stock that lack indeed a lot of, uh, you know, the fine prints, but um, you also have some paid ones that use also AI and they're actually pretty okay. Um, so yeah, that's why we were thinking like, yeah, should we really want to do this in an automated technology type of approach or indeed are we going to hire for you know, all the different materials and convert them, update them. So, yeah, so let, 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 me, let me say a couple of things, if I may. So in the database, we have a limitation of how we can store things and how people can retrieve things. Because like the SKG is meant for people to like put together their own security um, champion training, if you will, or their own like developer training as well. So 
pretty much the graph database is focused on how people retrieve things and how people can go about describing what they need to get information out of it. So there, that's kind of what Glenn is talking about because there, there are technical limitations because essentially the more that we add like randomly that doesn't really connect to anything else, then the slower it's going to get. And that kind of also goes for languages because if we're adding a bunch of like languages to the lexicon, so essentially there's like multiple definitions for yeah. a node, it's not necessarily a big deal, but no, like- it's, it's just a really, really, really stupid way to engineer this, right? right? Think about this as an engineering problem. There's no reason why we should have, right? I don't think developers, almost all technical documentation, unless it's on Getter, is in English. Developers read documentation in English primarily. Right. Um, so it doesn't even make sense for us to try to fully translate those. It does make sense for if there's any clarification for them to be able to copy that and put it into a search engine. On, so we literally all of the CNCF glossary for is is just on GitHub, right? So I can go and I can search for a term and I can add in what I believe the definition is for Spanish, Portuguese, et cetera. Um, and I don't think it should be embedded into the platform. That's not at all. Yeah. Fair. But then... So yeah, so I mean, we would have, yeah, then it would just be like a random document on GitHub basically. Yeah, so if they want any clarification for any any language localization, um, it should be, you know, they like raise it as a request and they push it into the glossary. Um, so I mean, I suppose we could track the links to it. If say you wanted like a translation, it could take you to it and we could just index the English ones. Yeah, I mean, literally a lot of what a lot of people do is just have if like for their readme document at the bottom of it, they say, if you need any language localization, please view the CNCF glossary with the guarantee that they've used the language that's searchable in the CNCF glossary. Um, yeah. How does that sound, Glenn? That, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, sounds doable. Yeah. Cool. And I got my two awesome to work, so I'm back in GitHub. So, um, but who wants to close out the issue? Yeah. I think we should also uh, then uh, check with section one that they reflected correctly what we discussed also in the in the goal then. Um, and then we can, uh, maybe Randall, should we make a draft for that then for, for section one later? Yeah, we can figure, yeah, we can figure that out later. Yeah, so at least that will help them. Um, um, yeah, and the other thing that is, I guess, quite important now is the education uh, material matrix that uh, section one was working on. Uh, I don't know who's also uh, helping uh, section one with this. Which one is this? Uh, yes. Which one is that? So this is the Excel matrix correlation. Um, yeah, matrix. Yes. So this document, it, well, this Excel sheet is telling us the known um, trainings and the gap analysis that we're doing for them shows us uh, the professional personas and the learner personas. Um, so what I would what I'm trying to do here is be able to ensure that, right, instead of tying nodes of language localization, we would tie a node of the identities represented for each of those trainings, right? So just, if I need to be able to search for application security, I wanna have all of those come up. I also, transversely, if I wanna search for the training required for like the, like just a higher ed track, those would be tagged. So this is underpinning that. Um, and then what's missing from this is what we're going to recommend as our, so I guess that's, I, I, this looks like it's halfway done to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the only thing I wanted to raise actually as a concern, and I already did that a bit in the uh, overall SIG meeting, is yeah. that we have here a list of quite some uh, references to materials, but actually the most important uh, well, okay, two most important thing is the cost of training, of course, needs to be free. 
And we also had the reusable column, basically like, yeah, is it open data that we actually can consume uh, in, uh, because if it's just a website or a video, yeah, then it's not really open data format that we can automatically in an ingestion pipeline, pull in updates, et cetera. So, uh, and, and currently when I look at them, uh, when we had the full SIG, I, I clicked through a couple and they all seem not to be open data formats. So that is a bit, yeah, the, the only concern I currently have. We do have a list, the matrix, the domain, the personas, all that, that's very awesome. Only, yeah, the, yeah. the, the data source, like the, the, the courses, the sources, those, uh, yeah, are, it seems all closed, closed data formats, although they're free, but, so I'm, I'm not sure what to do with that. Like we could, of course, you know, um, contact all these different, uh, the ones that we see adds really value uh, uh, according to what we want to achieve and ask them, hey, can we have access to your data uh, in the form of GitHub or whatever? Like it's really data we can use, then that would be great. Yeah, and if not, then uh, the list actually shrinks quite a lot. Yeah, it shrinks down to exclusively LF and OWASP, right? Um, yeah, which is but, 25%. Go, oh, going back to databases, just to point that out to also add further context. So we've been starting to model the database. And yeah, like if we have a course, for example, that's a paid for course, then we don't really, we can't really link to the data inside of that course. It's just that course becomes a node itself in the database. And it's basically just an orphan node because it's like an endpoint to like everything. So it kind of like beats the whole purpose of like what we're doing. Yeah. Um, well, I guess that somewhat simplifies the gap analysis because if we remove all non-proprietary things, our answer is government. There's no freaking training out there that we can use. Um, there's, I mean, that, because when we're being really honest here, like the issue is there's no security training. And I think that's going to be a stark demonstration, right? Now let me, let, let me ask you this real quick, real, real quick. Do you think it would be part or it should be part of our mission statement of the SKF team to, um, for example, if there was someone like Sonotype, for example, that had training and they didn't know that it had to be open data, but they're willing to make it open data. So should we assist with that? Do you think that, that would be helpful? Because we can. It's just something, one of those things that should that be one of the things that we consider within our day-to-day? -day? Yeah, absolutely. So what I would say here is instead of saying, uh, we can say like basically open, closed or a uh, partnership pending um, in the way that we submit. Cause some of these are super valuable. You know, Google's gonna join in, IBM wants to join in already. So those, the things that are on here, I think can be handed over. Um, but yeah, I think we just have to state that. Um, as we conclude the gap analysis, because if they're pending, we're not making the guarantee that that's openly provided at this time. I may have missed it, but is there, because I know there's a little discussion last time about course versus class, but is there like a standard we're using like Swarm or something like that for an LMS or how do we plan on hosting them? Or is it something for probably this proprietary database that we're building? Does that question it even make sense? It, it, it's, it would probably fall more under a proprietary database. That's very, open a discussion like in other words like it's how that all happens and that's really this is what i was saying last time that it, that the graph databases more than like being super optimized have a lot to do with like being consistent so like if you label something a certain way make sure that you keep going down that road because if you start getting a lot of orphan nodes then yes it will slow down to a crawl where you query something for the asvs and it takes like 45 minutes to respond. So that's why really what you got to understand is when you query a graph database, it basically has to traverse every relationship to find what you want. So if you have a lot of stuff that really doesn't make sense, it still has to traverse it anyway, even though no one's ever going to find it or ask for it. Well, could switch to a vectorized database, but I do think the node's the best option for this. 
Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think, I don't really think we're going to have a problem efficiently engineering the content at this time. We just need to define clearly what content we know we can host. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to sort of, so did you put a column on here already, Glenn, that sort of makes that statement? Uh, not really, no. So we have the reusable column. Uh, and that was the idea, hey, is it open data? Yes or no? Um, maybe we should add a column, like, uh, or we make a ticket. Um, I was thinking maybe just create a ticket first in the uh, GitHub and ask them to maybe contact the ones that are saying no to reusable. And maybe if they want to open up the data so we can actually consume, parse, and uh, ingest it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I do think uh, to make this easy, we should just, I would just put a column on that side of reusable if we're all cool with that and just have like a open or partnership pending um, mm -hmm. and make sure that the action statement is that within two weeks or so, we try to get our contacts set with that. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, right. if, can I go back real quick to your question? Because I'm looking at SCORM. So yeah, we yeah. could actually follow SCORM if we wanted to. Basically, what I'm saying is that we're not limited because we can add pretty much unlimited properties to the node, like yeah. language, like category, whatever it is you want. So we could follow SCORM. But essentially, yeah. in a graph databases, we have three things we can work with, which is relationships, labels, and properties. So and we, yeah. yeah, that makes sense? Yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. I think, and that may be like just for the sake of, of interacting with people that at those links, even if it seems, uh, you know, not open, they can probably export something in that SCORM format. So you could take right. that and then build a course separately. So the list right. may actually be bigger than we think. And, so and what's also could, nice is like with the nodes, they could be like different. It doesn't matter. So like, like each right. node could have like completely different sets of properties. So it doesn't, yeah. yeah. Where it kind of gets tricky is when you start getting into like categories, like for example, like network security or like those things that, because there are topics that traverse like multiple categories. And that's really where some of this can get a little bit tricky because yeah. you could be tempted to like add a bunch of stuff, but we've noticed that like, you got to really think about concepts and whatnot, which is kind of where this comes into. And just so you know, this is where Glenn's point of moving the library into section two, because pretty much right now, like we have what SKF has already put in, which is pretty much Glenn and Ricardo and Glenn has an educational background. So one of the big fears is like adding someone or adding too many people here that like are like don't understand how the graph database works and they think it's just labeling and then like it does slow down to a crawl. So that's why we're pretty also adamant about curating content that goes into the SKG. Yeah, it's like a second, la second layer of defense, sort of say then. That makes sense? Yeah, okay. Um. And I think this might be something that we need to have a group discussion solve between all the groups, because I think that like we have a very valid point, but I think you guys have a very valid point because, and there is a way to align both of these things, but, but I would argue that the librarian then would have to know how Neo4j works and like realize that part of using Neo4j because they've been helping us out is they've told us that refactoring the database it's kind of a daily thing because as you like progress, you will see better ways of like moving things around. So refactoring is definitely a part of using a graph database. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I don't, honestly, if you're using Neo4j right now, I'm trying to tag it with 10 professional personas and even less learner personas. Like I don't see this being an optimization issue and a librarian would have absolutely zero reason to index an object which is not in one of our categories that we're supplying. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. And if we can 
ensure in the UI that they can only choose from specific tracks, then great. Um, one way to handle this, right, for cluster, cluster analysis, that's why I have specifically stated that we have one unknown or other security persona, just consider that a node. And then we can take that and review those and see if they actually need to be put into sections that we already have or into a new classification, but it keeps that tidy. Okay. Um, that's how I would write. It's, I don't think that's going to be, and, and we do, I, even if we were to discover new personas, I would not state that it's going to be more than two in a year or so, right? We kind of know what they're, what they are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's going to be able to traverse it because I need 18 nodes on Neo4j. Should right. Be okay. And right now, just so you know, what we've been started on is we started with the ASVS the WSTG in the labs, which is kind of what we have right now. And most of our information centralizes around that. And then kind of the ideology is add David's course to that. And then like add the lexicon, everything. And then from there, you should have a pretty good graph database, if you will, of like, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, I just had to screenshot this because I have no idea what Glenn is doing, but I want this recorded. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's also my uh, free free week uh, of holiday, and I'm building uh, a Gundam. So that's oh, that's why. so cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, for... <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm glad you're here. I'm also going to be on the call in two weeks from my vacation in Vatican. But I was like, you you can't quit what you volunteered for. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. No, and. and and we would love to have you saw in in like we're we're doing a lot of work right now because we kind of had a refactor going on so um yeah. as we move along in this we would love to have that's why i sent you the message to consult with you about how to best yeah do things what would be really useful at this stage is uh to get a, a it doesn't have to be low level i need a high level architecture diagram um to be able to start not for me to think about it really, but just to communicate. Well, yeah, I guess to communicate to the librarians, like this is this is what underpins this because their discussions get carried away. I am not interested in talking about anything that cannot be built. I am very busy. <laughs> so Indeed, we, but, we already also think about it and uh, we thought yeah. we should actually have a sort of, um, you know, data structure requirement documents. Yeah? So if we have those people that say, hey, we want a partner, cool, then we can give them basically a document how we would ideally like the information. Um, yeah, and, and probably in the future when there would be, you know, when we have the whole thing running and it will be uh, very successful, there would be more parties wanting. So at least we can sort of enforce already with uh, the ideal data structure that we want to have things. So it takes little as possible time from our side to actually consume it then. Of course, now with the first iteration, like with David Wheelers and the ASGS testing guide, whatever, that's content already there. So those yeah, who will exactly. specifically make pipelines and also learn what is actually the right data set because yeah, we're yeah. like trying to run here. Um, but yeah, so that, that will also, we will make at least a draft of what we think and we will adopt and change it to uh, what we have learned uh, under the way. Yeah, and so how that we... how that's reflected in the plan, just to kind of show a couple things to point out. I can send you a link also, or Glenn, could you send her the link to master to the one that the latest version of our plan? Um, it's also in the PR if you want to see it. It's already hooked up. Um, but um, we did add the services for the SKF ops team. Um, most of that we see being maintenance and steward. Like in other words. Like a lot of people want to contribute, we can indicate, help them out, support them. Um, and then maintenance in the terms of automating, um, setting up guidelines, because there's a lot of contribution guidelines that we don't have right now. Um, they're, I mean, we do have, but they're not the best. Um, and um, so, yeah, so like, for example, some of those labs, we're going to do in ops ourselves so that we can like finalize a procedure and kind of put a procedure into place and then we're trying to use a lot of contractors for the additional stuff we have to add but in order to do that we have to have like an organized process to onboard these people which we don't have right now mm -hmm. yeah 
right. Well, see you next time. Um, Thanks, Adam. But uh, yeah, okay. So the so Glenn, what you were referring to sounded excellent. Um, but I think what we need to do, I, I mean, as just like a functionally, let's get this started. Let's create just a straight up one page, like GitHub right now that templates what we vaguely know that we need in order to be able to set it up on the platform. And let's test this with the single case of the most popular LF security certification. And in the process of getting that onto the platform, we're going to be able to fill that out in a way that we can then pass on to partners. Exactly. Um, yeah. 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 We wanted to actually use the uh, David scores for that, the security fundamentals. Because like David mentioned, it's now uh, manually added in SPF and we need to actually have a uh, GitHub action that does it uh, and ingest it automatically. So we're actually planning to do that already uh, and work actually as we speak, we're already playing with that, how to do it, how to break it down that makes sense for the SKJ to, to consume it, et cetera. So that will be our first case. You know, the, uh, the other ones, the ASVS and testing guide, they're a bit more easier because it already broke down into sections and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that will be uh, our book. And then, yeah, we can draft something real quick as a sort of guideline document for the data structure, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, honestly, it can be really sketchy right now, but until that exists, I think we're, we're gonna be at that stopping point. Also to add to, Dave, to David's course, Dave, because I had a conversation with David about this, he would like to see his quizzes added to the SKG. Okay, fine. But can we get those quizzes to not tell you that the answer is wrong, no matter what you choose? <laughs> <laughs> well, I told him about well, this three times. That, well, let me say this. So there's there's another section of this because there's a problem here with David. And that's kind of why I wanted David because he said, David also wants to add the test, but the test needs to be like on the LF platform for the certification. Yeah. So one of those things that we have on our plan is figure out an integration between those things and make a UI for the tests and the quizzes. Which where we can address the answers. <laughs> I mean, is that a necessary, why can't we just save ourselves a lot of trouble and just link them to that when they're, right? Because we have committed to providing a training repository. Mm -hmm. and yes. Why, why think, can't they just link to that? To be honest, I, I, I do agree with Cell there because I also thought the idea was, hey, you did the whole course, for example, from David, you want a certification, click, go there. And we agreed that was okay if other parties want to do similar, uh, if they have good yeah. content, right? That we, uh, that it, also, it also alleviates a sort of implicit user sort of issue that I don't want us to be forced into. I want professionals to be able to get themselves certified without mandating that they take some of this training if they're already in that space, right? So if we're creating a structure where we want the best security people to be validated, Go for the ones that already exist, right? So I want them to be intentionally separated functionally um, and keep things that work on platforms that already work. <laughs> Do not rebuild wheels that are already <laughs> existing. <laughs> I, I, I can speak for David, but I think I may be wrong, but I think the, the, the reason why we would want to add it to SKF was because it allows us kind of a more open canvas to present the information as opposed to how it's presented right now where it could it's all right but it could be better and this is also why david and i could be wrong i could be misunderstanding i'm just trying to communicate um but i think this is why david thinks that his course works best on edx because he feels like edx has the best presentation but he feels like it could be so much better than what edx has but he feels like that's why most people tend to gravitate towards the EDX version of the course is because that just seems to have the best presentation. Okay. For the test specifically or for the content? For the course in general. The, the, yeah. the problem with the test is that like, and again, I, I'm not, I might be misremembering things, but um, it, it has to do with maintenance and the fact that 
like he can't just put the test out there because there's only one test and he kind of wants to avoid people like sharing answers and stuff exactly and there's a secondary problem of you like this platform I'm going to have a, I I can talk to Dave about this. It just does not make sense. This platform is an educational platform. The reason why that cert is on the Linux foundation is because they have their internal verification, right? We're not here to set up an internal validation verification program on this platform. This is literally only an educational platform, right? You do not have the budget. We do not have the budget to recreate the Linux foundation certification program. That's not Fair. in our plan. That's not in our scope. And would it, maybe if we get more funding, I'll talk to Dave about recreating all of the wheels and the ways that he and colors that he likes. But like, that's not in our scope at all. Okay. Uh, maybe yeah. a year or two <laughs> or three. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think he, I think he said if we could integrate it, he was thinking more of yeah. an integration between yeah, platforms, right. but yeah. 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 I'd be up for that. That sounds good. But yeah, don't, you're not going to, please don't try to go engineer a second verification platform. Well, we weren't trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, cool. So I think that's, that'll be good. Are there any open issues around that? Because I haven't seen anything on, on that topic specifically. Not yet. It is on the new pool request. Um, like it is noted on there because I put note integration with LF because he did make a point to tell me about the quizzes but then he told me the test that's a whole nother ball game so yeah yeah i think quizzes yeah. is totally fine verified certification not our game um, yeah like that was a way of either integrating with lf or sending them to lf and then they could do the test and everything there yeah exactly um yeah and, and secondarily to that if i'm getting buy-in from right so it was on the discussion with GitHub last week about possibly you know, like transposing that verification onto someone's GitHub identity. Um, they're absolutely only gonna be willing to do that if it's with Linux Foundation. Um, so um, yeah, okay. So I think that's fine. Um, and I can talk a little bit more with Dave about that, but yeah, that would, that would have to be an extreme, that's a completely different platform on the back end than what you're building. That would be a, secondary engineering project where we don't so, so so just so you know for year one we're basically focusing on reorganizing the asvs wstg the labs also mm-hmm. application security and then we're doing david wheeler's course because there's also the labs for david wheeler's course because just in what we have right now and we haven't even specced out david wheeler's labs but just in the first part of that we're already at about it's four to 6,000 hours, most of which are contracting hours. 6,000 hours, that's a lot of hours. Yeah, they, they, yeah, and even in the ops team, we only have 8,000 hours next year. We did the math. Yeah. More or less. So we're going to be busy, which is another reason why, like, What's your opinion, Saul? Do you think we should have ops hours on there or do you think that's too distracting? Because the ops team are full-time employees. So essentially the ideology is that they're just going to go. But we, we that's one of the debates we had in our plan. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it definitely wouldn't be, a f- I, I mean, if it was monetized, it would be probably like a 25% sort of thing. I don't know. Um, yeah. But that's definitely when the place where I always have to like take my hands off is like ultimately if it's a dollar sign decision it's got to be C Rob right so it's a discussion we'll have to have with him well okay. technically it's all of us but really it's 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 him <laughs> well we do have it on there just in case but yeah I will I'll ask Rob about that as well then yeah and we're also all aligned at this point I mean we're going this is just the getting out and getting a plan, a monetizable plan to them to come back. Uh, We can ask for whatever we want. We have no guarantees. So it's better to ask now than to regret not being able to fund your ops in a year. And for the record, and for the record, we do have a discussion going with David and all of us, and we're getting Brian involved about making SKF like a more, um, what, do you, what word do you want to use, Glenn? Like, 
I don't know if legitimate is the word, but solidify the relationship. If that makes sense. So, so, so what that, that entails is that like, for example, me, Glenn and Ricardo will not be on this budget because we should be just kind of the management team is what we're calling it. That like manages SKF, you know, and then from there, the ops team will expand expand or contract based on the amount of work that is on the plan because yearly we will review that so that's kind of what we were talking about and have in mind yeah i think that really makes sense and as long as we have at the beginning like as long as written in that plan year two is review of maintenance maintenance costs i think that really makes sense and i that's also i mean just as someone who has done federal grants and reviews, that's the kind of thing I want to see in there, right? I want to see that this is a best laid plan with the intention of also restricting funds where they're not needed um, or expanding them. Um, So let's make sure that's in there. Well, I know there's an expectation that like at some point the investment would level off, but if you actually look at the plan, we're only asking for three developers and a UI UX developer. That's it. And it's not a lot of time because in three developers, you have about 2,000 hours per developer. You're yeah, at like 6,000 hours. And I think that's totally yeah. reasonable for this architecture you're going to need. And then, so, so what we're actually thinking is when you actually start going down the years, it'll probably expand because you'll probably have more contributors, more content. Like, so, so yeah, that's just our v- view. So, yeah. And if you'd like to be a part of the conversation with Brian, I'm sure you're more than welcome. I mean, we're trying to facilitate as much as possible, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, if you need me on that call, just let me know. Um, I'm much more interested at this stage. All of my bias is going towards like making sure that this is steering towards an engineerable object. (laughs) Um, Where the money goes to get that Let me also say that... (laughs) So let me also say this. So part of that plan is re-engineering the labs because we're trying to go for a more guided environment um, as opposed to like what we have right now because we like break UX like Bible. Like you got to like highlight the link, go to a separate browser, got it, the write-ups on a separate page. (laughs) So we're trying to correct our, our sins with the UX gods. But um, part of that is also making, releasing Hack OS as a distro. So we'll end up having our own version of like Kali Linux within SKF and this thing, which I think will be a great marketing thing. I think a lot of you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up on the top 10 distros just because we're like the open SSF has an indirect hacking distro. <laughs> so yeah, it's on the plan too. But the reason we're doing that is because we kind of like, we're thinking about operating budget and the way that we're running things right now is suboptimal because we can have images that are running at four or six gigabytes of memory, which is amazing. So um, we're trying to simplify that so that like with labs, if you really wanted to, you could put it on your own computer and just do it on your own computer. I just really like what you just (laughs) said to me. You're like, look, the front end doesn't really work. And also the back end doesn't really work, (laughs) but it works. It does. Yeah, you get my point. (laughs) Yes. Um, Yeah, no, I think that's a, it's a completely reasonable developer. And then, yeah, if, if, if this was expanding, I would maybe state that we would argue for like possibly the addition of one or 1.5, one in more of an operations role um, for year two after the thing is built and needs a little bit of configuration. Um, And we do have things in the plan, like hiring an educational content developer um, at some point. So, and I think that person should join ops because basically ops is Glenn's team and my team. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. We need to hire them as soon as possible. And I do think, and I I did nominate Glenn to be the librarian, by the way, because I think that would be a good role for him. Yeah, sounds being, good. Being that he knows about graph databases, has yeah. an educator background. Yeah. I should uh, change my uh, Zoom thingy to something with glasses then. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah. I think, so other than that, on this section, um, 
have we put out the little call to so glenn can you loop in with uh dave on the oh i do love those <laughs> 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 Sorry for fooling around, but yeah. I'll put on mine, but it's not as cool. Um, so I put in that column and I've identified the ones that are and are not open fully. Um, and I think that we can just state that as so as a sort of final, it's sort of the next step. I think we're almost there. Um, I can spend a little bit of time next week on my beautiful vacation time, figuring, finishing up that spreadsheet, at least getting us all of all of what we have there but we did want to have at least two to three people reviewing all of these just to make sure that they're tagged in ways that make sense don't know mm -hmm. if that's going to happen in reality um and i also think it's fundamentally less essential uh right so i'm going to deprioritize all the ones that we know we don't have open access to so if it's a little bit fuzzy that's fine we'll just go in we would ha be having a partnership discussion anyway so exactly yeah, yeah. at least we have uh for year one, we have a lot of work, like Randall said, already to do, right, with the material that is open data. And indeed, if we want to speed up there, we can always have a talk like half in the year, go back to the, the board, say, hey, look, we now identified these as well, but we need them more budget for implement, implementing it, whatever. I mean, that's all fine. But yeah, um, so at least we, we do have already good data to start with. Um, so we just see how far section one will get, uh, yeah, with, with more open data types that we potentially could also still add in this current proposal, right? Mm -hmm. And otherwise they will just continue working on it in the year. And if they identified, created those partnerships and it's open data, according to the requirements, we can just pull it in, consume it. Uh, yeah. If needed, maybe do an additional budget request, but let's see, uh, yeah. How much I, data I, is there and open actually? I wonder if, if because David, remember how David said that because if we wanted to be an LF project, which we're working on, like we'll have access to all of their resources. So I wonder if like we could just use their outreach. Like we don't really need a budget, like because we are SKF, we could just use the outreach channel True. that we're allotted to. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, yeah. And but there was another thing. So, so we're basically mixing now all the sections, <laughs> uh, but I think that's okay. Um, so yeah. do you also need some help maybe working on your markdown section? Yeah, so um, right now where I'm sitting, I really wanted to make sure that we, I mean, I'm kind of happy with the gap analysis. I need to go through and touch that, but really what I need to be able to jump onto is the well i was figuring we we're going to do the application security first right so mm -hmm. as long as like so if we're happy with that content and it's like done done um the next step that we need to go through is tag that to the different levels of security awareness from it um and then I so the only real update that's happened on that in the last week was the conversation with GitHub, seeing if they were interested. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that that discussion kind of played out was that yes, they're interested on a general level. They're absolutely seem to be like very disinterested in a badging system, only because what they stated is they haven't seen any value from those. And I said this is not a badge. This would be a verification system. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that discussion, they seem to be more open. Um, so on that section right now, right, my section is absolutely dependent on section two's implementation. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, the good thing, at least, uh, uh, because we have, well, the idea is that we have this operational team that we would be able to, uh, you know, in an agile way, support you in what yeah. are your requirements and we can actually embed them then, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're so the, pretty flexible on, on that point, actually, then. Because mm -hmm. then it will just be under the day-to-day -day operations work. You should shoot in your requirements, like, hey, this is what I would need. And we make sure that, yeah, that stuff is then available for you. Perfect. That sounds good. So I... Would you so be got... opposed, Saul, like, in your, in your... A real quick question. Would you be opposed to adding 
like SKF rewards for like people that use SKF? Uh, what are SKF awards? And yeah, I don't know, maybe like a shirt that says like I survived SKF or something. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like swag tears. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so all of these will need to be digital assets, but I will make shirts for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh yeah so they need to be they need to be verifiable digital assets so that's why in part i'm trying to work through github for that at this time um if not okay. we will lean back into the lf certification so what i what i need functionally from your architecture is to be able to import lf certification badges at this time perfect Subject anthony but while you're here while you're here l let me just anthony you need um can you make a note for us about the architecture diagram before we forget sure. yeah. yes please. thank you yeah architecture diagram and then the wording you used for that was so much better what was the expression for that like onboarding template before In ingesting data contributing contributing no, it was the data structure requirements or? There you go. Yeah. And I, so from the SKO team, yeah, I need the like first draft of an architecture diagram and then a like, say that one more time. Data structure, what? Why can't I remember this? Data structure requirements. Requirements. Yeah. If you can give me just like a one pager markdown. Um, that we're going to, we'll start playing with. I think that moves us sufficiently ahead on bringing together curation and implementation. Um, the next step. Yeah. But you, re you realize that every, every, I guess every different type of asset that we track would have a different structure, right? Like a podcast would have a different structure. A blog would have a different structure. A course would have a different structure. Yes. But right. I'm I'm literally referring to like I need an architecture diagram of the underpinnings of right. like where does the database point in theory at this time, uh, right. yeah, and like get me down to some like vague API endpoints, and for me that's just going to help a lot conceptually to be able to really know where we're sitting, um, and it also from there I can sort of we can use like a C4 model and like step down inside of there right and say right in a particular object this is what it looks like for a podcast. This is what it looks like for this curriculum series. Mm -hmm. um, but I just need sure. literally the highest level context diagram at this time. I could do that. Cool. So I guess, I mean, it's probably going to be literally the exact same people on the next call, but I'll jump on it to make sure. Um, but is there anything that, so for the, collect and curate section wait for no yeah i think yeah we we touched all the points so i think they're also good you know uh, our idea was actually to also help uh, section one and three at least with the converting of the markdown and writing a bit more out the, the miles and goals that are in there yes i would really love so we've got the session tomorrow um mm -hmm. for the rewards and incentives i'd really love to make that just a working session and blow into some of those now now we're much clearer on really what it's going to look like yeah. um so yeah if we can mm -hmm. use that time i think that would be super valuable yes i unfortunately cannot join tomorrow but i will probably spend today or the rest of next week to to help at least section one and section three as well because it looks like we're pretty far already with ours in defining and putting all the goals mm -hmm. um so we will help uh yeah also this week slash net next week uh, with the other sections to write things out and make goals and then yeah sounds good I'll it sounds good don't worry. It sounds like Glenn and I are kind of in the same place. Where we've had like so much to do. And then it's like, oh, I've got a week of vacation. I guess I'll do yeah. Linux Foundation. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but I'm I'm open the next hour. If so, I'll be on that and see if on the collect and curate, if there's anyone there that has a particular agenda. If not, do you want to just use this next hour super efficiently and just sort of like walk through those 
Exactly, yeah. Yeah, our idea was just to go over the open items, the things we changed, just give a brief overview, and basically then, yeah, that was it, right? So, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Um, in that case, since it's going to be most of us on that call, um, I'll jump back on, I'll, we'll jump on that Zoom, but can we use the next six minutes so I can make a coffee? Yes, of course. Yes, cool. so, uh, see you all in six minutes. Sounds good. Bye. I can't wait to see what you'll have on then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Bye. Yeah.